You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today, we're talking to one of our favorite vets, Dr. Laura Brown, owner of Green Tree Animal Hospital in Libertyville, Illinois, to answer a question from one of our listeners. Welcome, Dr. Brown. Hi, Polly. So today's question, what are the products I should have at my house in case of a medical emergency? Okay. So... This is a great question because obviously at different points in a dog's life, there are emergencies. I think we should start with the first one when a dog hurts its paw. What, okay. how, do, how do you stop a bleeding paw? What should I have in my medical kit? Okay. So, you know, injuries like that, cuts, lacerations, doesn't necessarily have to be on their paw. Um, You know, even like a dog bite wound or something that's bleeding. Okay. Or if you cut their nails too short and they won't stop bleeding. Okay. The main rule of thumb is to apply direct pressure for, you know, a good five, ten minutes to stop the bleeding for starters. If it's a dirty cut like a paw, you bet guys have been out on the trail and, you know, cut it on something or poked a stick in it or something, need to clean it up then. So just warm soapy water, just like you would wash your hands, you know, in an antibacterial soapy water. If you're in, you know, walking in the trails, you can get in a cold stream, you know, and stick mm-hmm. their foot in there and rinse it out. Doesn't have to have soap necessarily. That will be key to get like dirty debris and stuff like that out of, out of it. So you can kind of see what you're dealing with. Sometimes when it's on a area of their body that's furry then you have to sort of trim the fur away so if you know sometimes it's good to have like a battery operated shaver you know like a little tiny shaver that guys you know shave their beard with if it was battery operated and you could take it on the trail if it was all charged up you could shave the fur away from the area so you could get to the skin and see what's happening okay that makes sense So I had a vet appointment and someone was talking about what to have in case you have to make your dog vomit. Okay. And it's, did it used to be mineral oil and now what is it? No, the household product that can make dogs vomit is hydrogen peroxide. Okay. And so the vet tech made a good point that if you open it, it's no longer good. Yeah. It needs to be fresh and bubbly. Okay. Hydrogen peroxide or it won't work. Okay. Okay. That's a pretty big point. (laughs) It is a big point. The other thing I have to say about that is you have to be careful because you can overdo hydrogen peroxide and cause some serious irritation to the lining of a dog's stomach. Okay. So before you make your dog vomit at home, I would recommend that you call your veterinarian's office. Hope, you know, if it's in the daytime and they're open, you'll, and you're the regular client, you will get advice from the, them. They'll know who you are. They'll know what size your dog is. You can talk through what you're what you want to make your dog vomit because we don't always make everything come back up. Let's say they ate something. Oh, the other day someone called and their dog had eaten in their kid's retainer. Okay. So the retainer's got some wires on it. Might be kind of sharp, like fitting back up the coming back the out back up might do, cause more damage than just letting it try and pass. Depending on if it got chewed up or swallowed whole or whatever. So some things you don't want to make them vomit. Yeah. It's, I, once again, call the vet or the emergency clinic and ask if it's appropriate to try at home. And then based on your dog's size, they can give you the dose of hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. It's, okay. So that's good to know because that is a good point. So like our dog has gotten into a bag of bird seed. <laughs> Okay. And you, you know, we've watched the stomach start to explode. And then, you know, if you're not near the vet, you have to kind of act you could, pretty you fast. Do. Yeah. Well, and you know, most things, if you, if they ingest it and you know, they've ingested it within about a half hour, you're going to get it back up. If, if the vomiting is successful, the other thing that makes vomiting successful is to have some food in their tummy. So a lot of times I'll have people put the peroxide on a, a slice of bread Mm. And have the dog eat it that way so that they don't have to pour it down their throat or turkey baster it in. And the bread itself is good to like kind of put something down in there so 
as they start to vomit, it's easier to get stuff up if there's more bulk in there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And so is the peroxide soaking the bread? A little bit, yeah. That's how the dogs, then the dog's like, oh, I like bread and eat it up. Okay. okay. Versus having to, like, how else, how did you do the peroxide with the bird seed? Just opened her mouth. And then and we drove pretty fast to the vet. <laughs> did she vomit by the time you got there? Yeah. How much did you give her? Do you remember? It was not very much, which was kind of yeah. interesting. It wasn't yeah, like I put the whole bottled. I mean, it was. Yeah, that, that would be bad. I mean, yeah. you definitely need to measure. You know, we usually go a couple tablespoons on a big dog. Yeah. You know, and maybe one tablespoon on a smaller dog. But that's and then no more than if it doesn't work the first time, then it's a little risky to keep pouring peroxide down just for the whole irritate their stomach lining and make things worse instead of better. Do you guys carry a fresh bottle of peroxide on the trails with you? No, no. And I was yeah. asking, yeah, no, I don't. I mean, I yeah. do the porcupine tweezers and, you know, neosporin and bandage material. Yeah. But not, I don't bring that because I, she's not, I mean, at least my dog is not an eater. I mean, she is an eater. She's an eater in the neighborhood, but well, I'm tr- trails i guess she could be an eater eating yeah well and the thing is when you're with them like eagle eye on them usually you can kind of stop what they're doing i mean the things that need to come up are toxin things and things that are on the trails are like other animals feces and sticks and you know yeah leaves and stuff nothing that necessarily needs to come back out because they're not going to be toxic if they eat it so chocolate's a big one you know chocolate is bad things like that that you notice they eat and you know that you didn't intend for them to eat they stole the chocolate off the counter they stole 15 chocolate brownies they stole you know the most common things of late for us have been chocolate and the wrappers so the chocolate part of it is somewhat toxic depending on how much they get but the other part is that the wrappers aren't digestible so if they ate a whole bunch of candy with wrappers on it the wrappers could get stuck technically yeah that's interesting because i just was asking the vet about carrots one of my girlfriends gives her dog a whole carrot and she said to just make sure you cut it in half and cut the ends because that can get caught as well well and things like carrots are digestible right yeah so they're gonna you know, possibly could get stuck, but they're going to sit in the intestine and get worked on like any other food. So I tell people to use baby carrots a lot for treats because they don't have any calories in them. Okay. And they're, you know, I've never, ever had a problem with a carrot causing an obstruction. This is Polly Requa, host of Bark and Wag 15 Minute Vet Talk. Today we're talking about Rover.com. Rover.com is our sponsor. Rover.com is the largest network of five-star pet sitters and dog walkers in the United States. Rover.com offers in-home dog boarding, pet sitting, dog walking, and even doggy daycare. Rover.com has an app that allows you to search, book, favorite, and even pay. It's so easy. Our family is super busy. I have two girls in competitive sports. If I can't take the dogs to a sports event, I go on rover.com and find a dog sitter. I can do a free meet and greet. I can review a detailed profile and review of the sitter. And every booking is insured. If you're a dog owner, you must check out rover.com. Get $25 off your first booking by visit rover.com slash vet talk. That's rover.com slash V-E-T-T-A-L-K. And you will receive $25 off. Rover.com is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. When in need of a service to help you with your dog, use rover.com. For $25 off your first booking, visit rover.com slash vet talk. So the other thing that happens at the vet is we have a drug called apomorphine, and we give it IV, and within five minutes dogs are vomiting up whatever is in their stomach. It's super quick and super fast. And that's a little bit safer and more reliable. But if you're 30 miles from the vet, that may not be an option. Sure, sure. So I I guess I should have peroxide. Well, and you can use peroxide to clean out cuts and stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, Too, so. Okay, interesting. And just with caution, I will tell you, if you Google how much peroxide to make my dog vomit, 
there's you'll find an, uh, some answers to that question. So maybe use that as a guideline. But once again, my fallback is call and double check that it's an okay thing to make your dog vomit up in the first place. You know, everybody's dogs, you know, got their own story. What if they're on a whole bunch of medication and it would make be bad for them to vomit? Or if they're ingested some marijuana, let's say, you guys in Colorado have to worry about that. Yeah. If, if you knew that happened, then you would make them vomit. But if you didn't know that, by the time you figured out they were high, they might be too <laughs> doped up to be able to vomit appropriately and not aspirate. Yeah, right. So, in the case of our dog. <laughs> Right. It's so then you just high. <laughs> let it ride. Right. You know, so yeah. it's not super black and white and cut straight forward. Well, and when you see a dog's stomach start to inflate, it's a pretty scary vision, yeah. you know, well, so you know why they're inflating and you c- could make them vomit. But the caveat to that is dogs bloat and then their stomach twists. And the reason they bloat in the first place is usually because they can't vomit on their own. Like if they were able to get the stuff out of their stomach on their own, then they might not bloat in the first place. So when a dog bloats because it ate something and then drank a bunch of water and then sucked in a bunch of air Mm -hmm. and their tummies, it's not a toxin. It's not anything like that. That can just happen from eating a meal, a big meal drinking a bunch of water, their food expands. And then if they run and play and they suck in a bunch of air, then the, the ideal thing would be for the body to burp out all that air or vomit up that meal. Okay. And the body normally, a natural response would be to do that. But if they can't do that, then the bloat continues. And then worst case scenario, the stomach actually twists and shuts off the outlet to vomit. And those dogs are walking around trying to vomit, retching, 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 and they can't get anything out. So you would definitely not want to give that dog peroxide because you would add insult to the injury. Okay. But that's a medical emergency that you cannot do anything about at home. That dog needs to go to the emergency clinic ASAP. Okay. Uh, We had one lab that we watched the stomach, and so we rushed her to the vet, and... um the vet, we just dropped her off because this was like the fourth incident with her. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and they the, always take x-rays, right? <laughs> and the vet called me and said it was in Madison. So they had a lot of interns from University of Wisconsin, Madison. Right. And so she said, all of a sudden I heard the intern yell, whose black lab is this? And uh, <laughs> Dr. Myers went in the back and Wrigley had eaten a frozen squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> from the vet school you mean she had a clinic dr myers has a clinic and uh so they but they get interns from the vet school Got so it. the Got vet it. so this little intern was responsible for wrigley and all of a sudden tr- to try to make her get sick yeah and when and she got sick <laughs> it was <laughs> quite a shock yeah so oh. we've kind of been through it all but i you know i guess i forgot that you had to have fresh peroxide because if you're Put, putting, you know, a half a cup of peroxide down their uh, mouth and, you know, it's not working, then I could see people panicking and putting more down and that's just going to yeah. cause more problems. Yeah, it's not going to it's not going to work. Half a cup's a lot. If you think about that, that's eight ounces. Half a cup's four ounces. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what, I mean, I'm, yeah. I can't remember four what it was, just, but. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. That's 120 mLs, which is like 10 tablespoons. Okay. So that's overdoing it. A couple tablespoons ought to do you. Okay. Well, that's also a good point, not to yes. over-medicate. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, Eat thanks for being on the podcast, and we look forward to having you back. Thanks, Polly. Always a pleasure. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.